I would like to preface my coverage of this tournament by warning you. I shall be butchering the pronunciations of all the Korean words in this game. You have been warned. Hello everyone, this is Xander Tiron, and we are here with the Wargame Red Dragon Reddit Casual 1v1 Flash Tournament North versus South Korea. Quite a mouthful, so I'm probably just going to call it the Casual Tournament from now on. Anyway, in this battle on the blue team with a South Korea general deck, we have Kakya. And on the red team with a North Korean motorized deck, we have Rick Harrison. Now let us be away. We are on Paddy Field. Alright, so what we got? Looks like we have some South Korean infantry in KFE 25s. They do, was it the Sochong Su 85, I do believe, is what they're called. Meanwhile, from North Korea, we're getting some BTR 60 PBs, uh, some sort of infantry in them. Not oh, BTR 80 A's. I can never remember the name of all the different North Korean infantry. Um, let's see. These are pro oh, got probably an Igla in there. And BTR 60 PBs, I do believe that would be uh, probably Bo Chong Su. And we're back on the blue team, getting some KM 9000s with recon infantry in them. KM 9, I'm not, KM 900s, like the recoil rifle team. K30 B Ho, KFB 25. Now, since North Korea doesn't have any seed planes available to it whatsoever, when it comes to air defense, South Korea is definitely at an advantage just because the South Korean player does not have to worry about microing his radar AA on and off. Anyway, we got some Sean Maho 4s coming out. ZSU 234 Shilkas. The Igla bus is out, and the Conquerors bus is out as well. Looks like Rick Harrison is going to put a command into Charlie for that 2 plus. Oh, M36 is coming out. That's going to be some cheap fire support for Kakia. Okay. It looks like Kaka is going to definitely go hard into golf. Oh, he does have a K1 with him, so that could. A couple of K1s, so that could definitely give those. Or it will give those Chomaho problems, and I'm pretty sure two K1s can defeat three Chomaho 4s. The M1992 does have a grenade launcher and conquers though. Grenade launcher is really only useful in self-defense. No one has one all-around armor, so really can't take a hit. The conquers is not a it's an okay missile, it's just in a cat A environment like this, it really is not up to snuff. Alright, so lots of Bochong Su moving out into Bravo. Looks like Rick Harrison is playing conservatively here in Hotel. He's not trying to push into Golf, but he is pushing into Bravo. Oh. Shomaho 4s are firing. They don't have particularly good accuracy though, so. Oh, and the Sochong Su 85 are out. K 1s are have made contact with the Show my hose. Oh, but it does take a hit from the Conquerors, which does some damage. Those KFV 90s are putting fire in, and now those Tromahoes are outnumbered and outgunned. Looks like Rick Harrison is trying to pull them back. 
Oh, it looks like Rick Harrison's bringing out a UAZ. I think that might be for Bravo. Yuck Day, that's the Marines, I do believe. Nope, they're just. Alright, that's the Elite. Anyway, so all the Chomahos are down. Or, there's still one left, and there's some Bo Chong Su in the buildings here, but that's not going to be able to do much. Rick Harrison does have a minor point lead because he captured Charlie right off the bat. Well, Kakia has only just now gotten a command jeep out. Yeah, command jeep out for Echo. However, from a positioning, Rick Harrison, I mean, Kakia is definitely in a much better position. However, the amount of infantry that Rick Harrison has in Bravo should be enough that it could hold for a decent amount of time. However, Hotel is a completely different story. We have vehicles moving across some infantry moving across the open into a Chomaho for two BTR-60 PBs and two Bochong Su squads, which is not nearly enough to stop any of this here. Though the M36s are running low on fuel. H1J coming out, that's going to be pretty powerful, however, that Shilka is there and that could definitely cause trouble. Oh, oh, K1's putting some fire into the Bo Chong Su and BTR PBs in Charlie. The KFV 90s, 25s, K1 and M36s have all made contact in Hotel. MI25 is providing some fire, but those 57mm rockets are just very lacking, and the Flata ATGMs are also not very good either. Though it does get a side shot on the K1, which leaves on 1 HP, but there is now nothing left from Rick Harrison in Hotel. And basically nothing between Kakia and the command in Charlie, which is fairly exposed right now, and nothing in Delta either. KFV, KFVs are pushing up along with, uh, looks like the infantry are moving up. b hose are out to stop any airplane shenanigans. Rick Harrison is pushing his Yuck Yonde and Bo Chong Su up. However, if they stumble upon that, basically the b ho KFV 25 and H1J, if they see them, can definitely cause some trouble. Yeah, they're spotted and, oh. They are putting fire into the H1J. Oh, the Biho is firing on the Yuck Yonde and wipes out a squad. And is now going to town on the other one. Along with these Jixa Hagiban. Recallless rifles. And the KFE-25. And now some more Ho Chong Su and KFE-25s are out. Oh, Bo Chong Su put one shot into a KF the KFE-25, but it's not enough. Biban Cho... B... Ban Chong Po, I think that's how it's pronounced, gets caught in the open. Oh, that Biho's overextending a little bit. That's putting fire into those Bo Chong Su, takes a heads left on one, eight, 1 HP, goes down. Meanwhile, over here, Choma Ho is out, and they're trying. Rick Harrison is trying to form his line up. Uh, however, or that. Uh, chances of that Choma Ho. Yeah, it goes down to the KFE 90s and the K1. The more trauma hose and SU 100s coming out at close range, those can definitely wipe out all of these here. Meanwhile, more so chunks who are pushing into Bravo. One trauma hose goes down, the second one. Is it's fast moved into position, so it's relying on the stabilizer and goes down to side shots from the KFE 90s. Now it's just the SU 100s, and they're moving. They don't have stabilizers, so they're not going to be able to return fire. So Chong Su have come across the Bibon Biba Choke Po and the Bo Chong Su. Uh, so Chong Su are not getting involved in the fight, so it's just the Bibon Show taking fire. H1T coming out, tow two missiles. It's pretty potent. K30B ho is moving up. Running low on fuel though. 
So it could wind up being easy prey for that Shon Maho 4. Looks like some more Bo Chongsu or yeah, Bo Chongsu moving out to Bravo. Oh, looks like the Chomaho managed to take out the Biho. Oh, it's firing on the move, so it's gonna have pretty trash tier accuracy. Those KFE 90s are putting fire onto it. They're pretty fun vehicle, if I don't say so myself, those KFE 90s. And they're only good optics, so you can spread them about pretty easily. Uh, but now that AH1T, there's nothing there to stop it. I was going to hit first to Conkers at the Toe 2. Oh, Conkers does hit, but the M1992 does go down. Meanwhile, So Chong Su and KFV 90s and 25s pushing into Bravo. But it doesn't matter because the UAZ and Delta goes down, and that cuts off Rick Harrison's reinforcements and also gives Kakia a plus one point advantage. Oh, Iglabus trades with the Cobra. <clears throat> a little bit too little too late, however. So, yeah. So, Rick Harrison's forces and Charlie and Bravo are now completely cut off. <coughs> so, it's only a matter of time before Rick, before Kakyo tightens the noose on Rick Harrison. Command infantry coming out for Hotel by Luxit, or could be going for Delta. Though Kakia does want to be careful with those, lest that helicopter is within range for this Igla team that Rick Harrison has. Can so that's 2400 helicopter range. Uh, looks like it's managing to stay just outside of it for now. Anyway, KFE 90s, oh, KFE 4050s are out. And they're pushing into Bravo. And they're going to be able to roll through those BTR 60 PBs and wipe out that UAZ with no problem. Yep. H1J gets the kill on the UAZ. Oh. Jibans. Command Jiban. Command of G is out in the open. That K1 is going to stumble upon it in no time. And those Yakyundes are not going to be able to do anything about it. Neither can the Bochong Su. Oh, he's trying to run it in, but they're out in the open. They're taking fire. KFE 90 is going to be firing at them soon. Oh, now he's trying to run the Yuck, yuck Child Day. I'm not quite sure how that's supposed to be pronounced, but they're going to get basically one shot at Yeah, one shot by that KFE 90. And yeah. And we ban our spotter and taking fire. <coughs> And the Bo Chong Su. Oh, Bo Chong Su don't get the kill on the K1, and that is game. All right. So let's break it down. Conquest points. Kakia 154 to 81 with 1,790 kills to 590 losses. Battle lasted 10 minutes, and it was uh, pretty decisive right from the start there with um, Kakia managing to push all the way into Hotel, basically the beginning. Uh, this, this is basically contributed to two... This can be attributed to two things that happened, in my opinion. First of all, um, they basically went opposite of each other. Rick Harrison focused on Bravo, while Kakia focused on Golf. And... Bravo is not exactly an ease, especially when you're doing with infantry, you can't really push rapidly with infantry, while with his vehicles, Kaga could rapidly push through Golf into Hotel and then through Hotel. And Rick Harrison's deck choice definitely didn't help him. You know, those he only had, his best tank was the Shonmaho 4, which is not exactly the greatest tank out there and is completely outclassed by the K1. And... As for that, uh, the best tank North Korea has is the T90S, but it's 
it's a, it's a very generic super heavy end. You know, it could potentially if if Rick Harrison had brought a general North Korean general deck instead and had a T90S in hotel that could have definitely have uh, if not stop the advance completely it would have been able to slow it down and stall it and would have given him more time to stabilize that side but that's just you know pure conjecture on my part doesn't help the fact that quite honestly um South Korea is Basically, South Korea and North Korea by themselves are not particularly good decks, and North Korea really is not in a, does not really have the right unit choices to take advantage of South Korea's weaknesses. I'd say um, South Korea doesn't have the greatest air defense network, but North Korea really can't exploit that, especially with the lack of a seed airplane. South Korean air, South Korean Air Force definitely outclasses the North Korean one completely. It has better ASF selection. Uh, in my opinion, has better ASF selection. The MiG-29 that North Korea has is really not very good whatsoever. And yeah, that's a, probably about it uh, for me, for what I have to say. Yeah, I'm Xander Turon, and this was Game 1 of the Reddit Casual 1v1 Tournament. You guys have a lovely day.